Hello viewers, welcome back to this session of e-learning project on Google the TV Live. Uh, remember, this is Obonyo Kenneth. I'm yet here for another production. We have been having very many lessons, but today, this one is a very special one. It's actually dedicated to all of you out there in quarantine. Without wasting time, let us go to our question. Due to public demand, I thought it wise handling the solutions of the exercise that was given to you. I really thank all of those that endeavored to hand in their work through WhatsApp and emails. Because I remember we received over 262 learners handing in their work for marking. So, the very first question, if we went direct to the board, says factorize completely. Now, one mistake some of you were making was you were putting an equal sign there. You were changing the setting of the question. This is an algebraic expression. It is not an equation. They have not said that solve. They have just said factorize. And if you are to factorize, they want you to factorize completely. Now, before we go direct to factorizing, remember this is a quadratic equation. The word quadratic originates from Italy. That is in the Latin language. The word is quadratus. Quadratus simply means to square. Implying that these are equations with a square somewhere. With a power two somewhere. But remember, when we come back to the English language, a quadratic equation is defined as that type of equation in the form ax squared plus a bx plus a c, which is equivalent to a zero. This is the definition of a quadratic equation. Where, Mr. Examiner, sir, where a is never equivalent to zero. Remember, when A is zero, then it means that the X squared disappears. And once it disappears, we remain with BX plus C equaling to zero, which ceases to be a quadratic equation. It now becomes a linear equation. That's why we are saying these are the types of equations in the form AX squared plus BX plus C equaling to zero, where a is not equivalent to zero. And remember, your teachers must have told you from school that A is known as the quadratic coefficient. B is the linear coefficient. And C is what we call the constant. Now, there are different methods that we use to solve quadratic equations. We very well know that method number one is what we call the factorization method. Method number two is what we call the completing square method. Then method number three is what we call, yes, I want someone to tell me, what is method number three? Yes, someone is telling me the bulldozer method. Or we can call it the quadratic formula. And then what is method number four? Yes, someone is thinking about elimination. No, elimination method is for simultaneous equations, not quadratic equations. Elimination method is for simultaneous equations. Here we don't use it. Uh-huh. Another thought. Someone again is thinking about to... Uh, yes. Oh, very good. Very good. We have the graphical method. Implying that here, when we are solving quadratic equations, we have four different methods like we have mentioned. But, Mr. Examiner, sir, whenever we are using method number one, which is the factorization method. There are two approaches. There are two phases. The first phase is when A is equivalent to a 1. While the second phase is when A is greater than 1. Now, look here. There are two phases in the factorization method. Remember, the factorization method is the first method of solving quadratic equations. But again, it also has two approaches. The first approach is when A is equivalent to 1. The second approach is when A is greater than 1. Now, when you look at these two approaches, 
which one of these two do we need to apply to what we have been given? What do we need? Which one? Is it the first one? Yes, someone is, yes, I see very many people raising their hands. They are saying the first one, when A is equivalent to one. But remember, this is our A, this is our B, and that is our C. Is our A equivalent to one? Is A equivalent to one, viewers? No, of course it is not equivalent to one. Our A is greater than one. Why? Because it is equivalent to eight. Implying that we are going to use the second approach. Now, what does the second approach say? If we are to use it to factorize the quadratic equation. The second approach says that whenever the first number, the quadratic coefficient, whenever our a is bigger than 1, whenever our a is larger than 1, whenever our a is greater than 1, start by multiplying a times c. Now what am I trying to say? Let us go to the solution, Mr. Examiner, sir. In our solution, Mr. Examiner, sir, we are going to use phase two. Our A is greater than one. That when you want to factorize it completely, start by looking at the quadratic coefficient. Is it greater than one or it is equivalent to one? No, it is greater than one. If it is greater than one, start by multiplying it by the constant, by the last number, to get a product, to get a new equation. Aha. Uh -huh. 8x squared minus 38x plus what are we saying? We are saying we are getting the 8 times the 35. This 35 here. Remember, we are not equating to zero because they have not requested us to solve. They are only telling us to do what? To factorize completely the algebraic expression. Remember, algebraic comes from the word algebra. Algebra originally was known as Hisab Algebra Wal Mukabala by the Arabians. Now, Mr. Examiner, sir, we are having 8x squared minus 38x plus. Please, if you're not sure about multiplying 8 by 35, get a calculator so that you get a, a correct answer. Now, me, I'll get my calculator because I know some of you there. You're pretending to be using smartphones to multiply. Me, I'm going to use my scientific calculator. I'm going to get my 8 times a 35. When I multiply 8 by 35, I'm going to end up with a 280. So I'll have 280. Now, after getting my 280, remember whenever we are factorizing, whenever we are factorizing, whenever we are using method 1, we need to look for what we call the roots of a quadratic equation. You can either call them the roots. You can call them the factors. Or if you don't want, you can call them the zeros. You can either call them the roots. Everyone roots? Yes, roots. Everyone factors? Yes, factors. I know some of you are just keeping yourselves quiet. But I will come there and get you. And then lastly, everyone zeros? Yes, zeros. Even the cameraman, I want you to repeat after me. Zero. Very good. He has said it loudly. Now, if we are going to look for the roots, the factors, or the zeros, remember in the previous lesson I told you, we are going to look for two numbers, which when we multiply, we get 280. But when we add those two numbers, we end up with negative 38. How do we get those two numbers? Do we use chrome work? No. I gave you a simple approach yesterday. The approach of decomposition. We are going to use side work of trial and error. Mr. Examiner, sir. Let us come here and borrow some space. 280 is what we want broken down. This 280, the new constant, uh -huh, we can break it down. By what? By 2, what do you get? 140. Good. By what? By 3? Not by 3. Come on, I taught you these things in the previous lesson. By 2, you end up with a 70. Uh-huh. 
someone i'm hearing someone saying 70 you don't go as far as 70 start with the lowest numbers uh-huh by two again what do you get a 35 mm-hmm Someone is again saying by two. Of course, you cannot divide. When you divide 35 by two, you will have a remainder. We want to divide so that we don't remain with the remainder. Uh-huh. So we are going to use three. Now some are getting stuck here. That how do we use three? Can we use three? Can we really use three? If you're not sure, go to your calculator. 35 divided by three. You get a remainder. How about four? 35 divided by four you still get a remainder. How about five? Start a five divided by five. I get my seven. That's why I told you, don't rush. Implying that, instead of writing this three here, we are going to say by five. Wonderful. So, we can say by five, we have a seven. Another person will say again by three. Can you use by three here? Can we write three here? No, three cannot work. Maybe we write four. Okay, by four. Okay, someone is telling me four cannot also work. Someone is saying by five. Can we use f No, five cannot work. It is by seven. So by seven, you end up with a one. Now, Mr. Examiner, sir, in decomposing 280, in breaking down 280, we are now having a two, a two, a two, a five, a seven, and a one. How many numbers are those? One, two, three, four, five, six. Our interest is not all the six numbers. Our interest is only two numbers. We want two numbers, which when we multiply, we get 280. But when we add those very two numbers, we get negative, 300, negative 38. That is what we are trying to look for. We are not using crumb work. We are using trial and error. Now, if it is trial and error, what do we do? We are going to get the first two alone. When we get the first two alone, then we multiply the rest. How do we multiply the rest? We are going to have a 7 times a 1, which is a 7. A 7 times a 5, which is a 35. A 35 times a 2, which is a 70. A 70 times a 2, a 140. Which means we are going to have 140 there. Mistake is a minister. Is there a possibility of multiplying it 2? by 140 and you get 280 mm, yeah that possibility is there when you multiply 2 by 140 you end up with the 280 even if both of them are negatives a negative 2 times a negative 140 you get still a 280 which is a positive but is there a possibility of adding 2 and 140 and you get negative 38 no mistake, Samina. You cannot add those two numbers. Even if the two is a negative, no, you cannot. Even if the 140 is a negative, no. Even if both are negatives, you cannot end up with a negative 38. Which implies that a two and a 140, those factors, those roots, those zeros cannot work. So now what are we going to do? We have a two and the next factor a two. Two times a two to give us a four. Then the rest, we also multiply them. 7 times 1, a 7. 7 times 5, a 35. 35 times 2, a 70. Now we have a 70. We again repeat, ask ourselves, 4 times 70, is there a possibility of getting 280? Yes, it is there. But can you add 4 and 70 and you get a negative 38? Mm, according to me, no. How many others say they are joining my answer? They are supporting me. Eh, no one. The rest are saying they can work. Let us see. Even if 4 was a negative, negative 4 plus 70, you get negative 66. Even if a 70 was a negative, negative 70 plus a 4. Ah, even if this one was a negative, even if the one was a it cannot work, surely. Let us agree. It can't work. So if it cannot work, then we can go ahead. We again add another 2. We multiply. A 2 times a 2 times a 2. 2 times 2, that is a 4. 4 times 2, that is 8. We bring the 8 there. Then the rest, we have a 1 times a 7, which is a 7. A 7 times a 5, which is a 35. So now we are having a 35 there. Mm -hmm. When you multiply 8 by a 35, is there a possibility of getting 280? Yes, you can. 
But is there a possibility of adding them and you get negative 38? No, mistake is abina. I know that it is becoming lengthy, but the possibility is not there. So that one cannot also work. Aha, uh -huh, we bring in a five. Good. A two times a two times a two times a five. Aha, uh -huh. this is already a ten. Five times two is a ten. Ten times two is a twenty. Twenty times two is a what? A forty. So we have a forty here. Aha. Uh -huh. Then a seven times a one to give us a what? A seven. Aha. Uh -huh. Forty times seven, can we get a two eighty? Yes, it is possible. Forty plus seven, even if this one is a negative or the other one is a negative, is there a possibility of getting a negative thirty eight? No. It's not there. It's not there. So we come up the last one. We bring in the seven also. Uh huh. A seven times a five, thirty-five. Thirty-five times two, seventy. Seventy times two, one forty. One forty times two, two eighty. So we have two hundred and eighty times. Now we are left with the one. Mm hmm. Is there a possibility of multiplying two hundred and eighty times one and you get two hundred and eighty? Yes, that one we agree. Even the cabinet man agrees. I'm sure even all your parents agree that 280 times 1, you get a 280. But is there anyone who agrees that when you add a 208 and a 1, there is a possibility of getting a negative 38? No, it is too far. It is too, 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 too far. So which means we have almost finished all the factors and we have not got the roots. We have not got the factors. We have not got the zeros. What do we do? Can we say it's a vague number? No, let's not rush to say it's a vague number. Let's continue. Since we got the first one and the second one and the third one and the fourth one and the fifth one, now let us get the first one and the last one. Good. The first one and the last one, a two times a seven, you get a 14. Uh-huh. Then the rest, we are going to also multiply them. A 5 times a 1, which is a 5. A 5 times a 2, which is a 10. A 10 times a 2, which is a 20. So we have a 14 and a 20. But again, again, a 14 times a 20, a 14 times a 20, yes, we can get a 280. Is there a possibility of adding a 14 plus a 20 and you get a negative 38? No, it's not there. It's not there. So what do we do? Now, what we are going to do, after getting the first one and this seven, we can bring in the first one, the seven, and then we bring in the five as well. So that we have a two times a seven. A seven, that is a 14. A 14 times a five, what do you get? We get our 70. So now we are having our 70 here. Uh-huh. Then the rest of the numbers, we are having a 2 times a 2, which is a 4. A 4 times a 1, which is still a 4. But mistake is, I mean, sir, we already used the 7 and the 4 somewhere, which means they were not helping us, implying that still they cannot help us. No problem. Since we have brought in the 2, the 7, the 5, we can still bring in also the 2. Uh-huh. So that we have a 2 times a 7, which is a 14. Then a 14 times a 5 times a 2, which is what? Remember, this is a 5 times a 2, which is a 10. A 10 times a 14, which is 140. Uh-huh. We have our 140 here. Times a what? Now we are left with a 2 times a 1 to give us a what? A 2. Those who have just joined us, this is Obonyo Kenneth on Google the TV, sponsored by the e-learning project we are solving number one they want us to factorize completely but in factorizing completely we are still looking for the roots of the quadratic equation we are looking for the factors of the quadratic equation we are looking for the zeros of the quadratic equation but we said we are not going to use crumb work we are using try and error method we have tried most of them and they are failing we have not yet got the roots aha uh -huh. now we already got a two a seven a five and a two. Ah! We are almost finishing all of them. We are not coming to the answer. Mr. Examiner, sir, let us also bring this two here so that we have the two also on board. But still, when we bring it, let's see whether we get the answer. A two times a seven times a five times a two times a two. It will give us what? 208. Now we have a 208. Times a what? A one. But we already have it here. 
which is a repetition. So we have completed all of them. Eh, Mr. Examiner, what do we do? Where did this number come from? People are watching from Sironko, they are watching from Al Amalatar, from Gulu, from Kasese. The number is becoming a number from border to border. Mr. Examiner, sir, without closing the chapter, without switching off electricity, without concluding, let us get this two. Instead of bringing in the last seven, we bring in the second last one. A two and a five. Let us see whether it is also... Be this number is behaving like the COVID-19. You bring this vaccine, it refuses. You bring chloroquine, it, you bring, you take lemon, you do this, you go jogging, they say don't go to jog. It, it is becoming like COVID-19. But no, we should not give up. A two times a five, we get a what? A ten. Aha. Uh -huh. If it is a ten, let us see the rest. A two and a five is a ten. Now we are left with a seven times a one, which is a seven. A seven times a two, which is a fourteen. A fourteen times a two, which is a twenty-eight. We write the twenty-eight here. Times twenty-eight. Let us see whether we are having something complicated or it is doable. Aha. Uh -huh. Is there a possibility of man playing ten times twenty-eight and you end up with the two hundred and eighty? Eh? Yes, that possibility is there. Is there a possibility of adding a 10 and a 28 and you get a negative 38? Ah, oh, everyone must be very appreciative. People are celebrating. People are very happy. People are, I can see people even washing their hands with the soap and water. Don't over celebrate. Now we have the roots. Mr. Examiner, sir, without wasting time, we now have the roots. We now have the factors. We now have the zeros. What are they? They are a 10 and a 28. But is it a positive 10? Is it a positive 28? No. Of course, what we are going to do, if we say negative 10, negative 10 times 28, we shall get negative 280. But is this one a negative 280? No, it is a positive. How about if this one is a negative and this one is a positive? A positive 10 times a negative 28, we get a negative 280. But is this one a negative 280? No, which means what we are going to do is even this one is going to become a what? It is going to become a negative. Uh -huh. So this is a negative 10 and a negative 28. A negative 10 times a negative 28, we get a positive 280. A negative 10 plus a negative 28, we get a negative 38. So now we are having a negative 10 and a negative 28. Those are the roots of the quadratic equation. Now, after getting those roots of the quadratic equation, we are going to go ahead and fix them in the original quadratic equation. We don't fix them in the equation which we got by multiplying A times C. We fix these into the original quadratic equation never forget and again you fix them in the new equation which you got by multiplying a times c now after learning that what are we going to do we are going to say 8x squared mm -hmm. 8x squared the negative 38x now is going to be deleted and replaced by a negative 10x and a negative 28x and we write it like this, a negative 10x and a negative 28x. And then we bring in the last number, which is a positive 35. Now, after getting that, we are having four factors. The first one, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. We are going to bracket them. Remember, we are doing corrections for the previous numbers, which most of them, most of you people failed. We had over 260 people who submitted in their answers, but only three managed to get the correct answer the rest over 200 and ay, you people what happened anyway let's go through it we are having a bracket there and then a bracket there remember we are now going to look for the common factors in the first bracket we are going to look for the common factors in the second bracket but how do we get those common factors let us go for sidewalk here mr examiner sir we are having 8x squared but remember 8x squared, 8x squared 
you get a 2 times a 2 times a 2 times x times x to get 8x squared. And then how about 10x? 10x, Mr. Examiner, sir, you get, first of all, to get a 10, you multiply a 2 times a 5, then times an x. Now, Mr. Examiner, sir, when you look at all these factors up and the factors down, which ones are common? First of all, there is a 2 there and a 2 there. You circle them. Then secondly, there is an x there and an x there. Which means a 2 and an x are common. They are common. We multiply them to get one common factor. That is a 2 times x to give us a 2 what? A 2x. Implying that the 2x is going to come outside the bracket so that we have 2x outside but remember, in 8x squared, we have already pulled out 2x. In 8x squared, we have pulled out a 2 and an x. What do we remain with? A 2, a 2, and an x. When you combine them, what do you get? A 2 times a 2, a 4. A 4 times x, a 4x. So which means we have a 4x there. Minus. In a 10x, in a 10x, which had a 2, a 5, and an x, we pulled out a 2 and an x. What do we remain with? Not a 5 alone and a 6. Someone is saying a 5 and a 6. Not a 5 and a 6. It is only a 5. So we have a 5 there. So minus a 5. Wonderful. Now, Mr. Examiner, sir, we are continuing. We need to look at the common factors of negative 28x and a positive 35. Let us create some little space there. Don't mind. We are creating some little space here. Uh -huh. Now, Mr. Examiner, sir, we are looking for the common factors. And in getting those common factors, remember, we are having a negative 28x and a positive 35. But remember, there is a negative sign here. Let us start with the signs. There is a negative sign here. And in a positive, there are two negatives. There is a negative times a negative, which means already a negative sign is also a common factor. Now we go to a 28x. Mr. Examiner, sir. 28x, what do you get? Mm -hmm. We can get a 2 times a what? What do we multiply to get 28x? And how we are multiplying a 2 times a 2? That is a 4 already. Times a 7. A 2 times a 2, that is a 4. A 4 times a 7, that's a 28. Then times an X. Aha. Uh -huh. After getting that, we come to 35. Mr. Examiner, sir, how do we get 35? A 35. Do we have a 2 in a 35? No. What do we have then? We have a 5 and a what? And a 7. So, huh? We can have a 5 and a 7. Because 5 times 7, you end up with a what? A 35. Now, what are the common numbers here? We have a 7 and we have a 7, which means a 7. And the other negative are common factors. Those ones are going to shift outside the bracket. Inside the bracket, what do we remain with? We had a negative 28x. The negative is out. The 7 is out from the 28x. The 7 is out. What do we remain with? A 2 times a 2 times an x. A 2 times a 2, a 4. A 4 times x, a 4x. Implying that we have a 4x there. Now, we go to the sign. Remember, we had a positive here. But a positive has a negative times a negative. There were two negative signs. One of the negatives came outside the bracket. What do we remain with? We remain with another negative sign. How about in a 35? In a 35, we had a 5 and a 7. But the 7 was pulled outside. What do we remain with? A 5. Wonderful. So we have the 5 there. The moment you are dealing with the quadratic equations and you reach this stage and these two brackets are the same, they have the same contents, then you know you're on the right track. The moment you reach here and these two brackets are different, please start afresh. Look through and see where you erred, where you made an error. Don't give up. Let's continue. Most of you thought it was a very complicated number. We are almost concluding. We are almost reaching home. Now, common factor here, out of the two brackets, we choose only one bracket. So we are having our 4x minus a 5. Then the contents which are outside the bracket, we have a 2x 
and then a negative seven. Mr. Examiner, sir, when a student or a teacher passes a number, what happens? You're supposed to clap for him. Are you people clapping out there? Parents, tell your children to clap. Yes, I can see some homes. Some people are clapping. Wonderful. That is good. I'm sending angels to your house to guard you from the coronavirus. Yes, I can see you're very you're smiling. You're even kneeling down. Hey, wait. Don't over kneel down. I'm not God. Now, 4x minus 5 into 2x minus 7. We have already factorized completely. We have factorized completely. We have factorized completely. This is what we are supposed to present up to our final answer. The working is very clear there. Those who have moved with me, thank you so much. Those who tried and passed these numbers, kudos for you. Bravo for you. Those who failed it, please never give up. Keep moving until when you write down the right answer. Please, add those who passed, please, when you reach such a number and the final answer. You can even say quite easily done. I know some people will, not, will say, no, surely it wasn't quite easily done. This is Obonyo Kenneth on e-learning project Google Day TV. Please tune in daily. We shall be there daily with the various subjects. We shall have physics, chemistry, biology, history, literature in English, and others. Thank you so much. Let's return from the short break and handle the next question. Okay, welcome back viewers from that very short break. I had just gone to wash my hands with the soap and also to look out uh, of my room. I had someone coughing outside, so I had to be sure that I did not have an incident. Welcome back from that short break. It is Obonyo Kenneth once again on Google the TV, uh, sponsored by the e-learning project. Trinity SS Navoero, I cannot forget you. All the parents out there, all the government workers, all our students, learners from whatever district and school, you're most welcome to this universal program. It covers all of you, all your needs. Whenever you need assistance, our phone night lines are just moving. They are scrolling down the screen. Call us at any time. We chat mathematically and in different other subjects. Now, this second number here gave very many people hard time. I don't know why. Because the question was very clear. You know, examiners are also funny. When they want you to solve their questions, they really want you to get the correct methods as well as answers. Solve the inequality and show your answer. On a number line, they are now talking about an inequality. They are bringing in a new word, an inequality. 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 Now, remember inequalities are different from equations. In equations, we have an equal sign. In inequalities, we have e inequality symbols, such as, yes, someone is trying to give us, such as a circle. No, come on, you also. Don't make us laugh at this moment. We are doing serious work. We don't have circles here. We are looking at the symbols that we have in inequalities. Yes, someone is telling us, that sign there, uh-huh. Another one is showing me that sign there. Uh-huh. I can see someone from Bukoto. Another one from Entebbe with the same answer. Kasese. Kasese, welcome to this program. They are telling us there is that one there. And then someone from Komi district is showing me. Uh, they are, those, are they called grasshoppers? They are called what? But of course, something in line with this. Now, these are the symbols that we have in inequalities. Inequalities, remember, do not give us one answer. Inequalities give us various answers. They give us a solution set. They don't give us only one answer. The first one, the whole class, the first one is less than. The next one is greater than. This one is less than or equal to. Good. This one greater than or equal to. I see some parents toge singing together with their, you know, at one time, there was a class where uh, the teacher was saying, everyone, one plus one, two, two plus two, three, three plus three. So, 
So the whole class was just singing, and you know those backbenchers. The backbenchers were not concentrating on what the teacher was actually singing about. They were just there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So the teacher reached a point and he said, Stop! The backbenchers did not hear. They continued. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. By the time they looked up, the teacher had stopped the class. They said, okay, come forward, come forward. Yeah, the people don't know what I'm teaching about. Anyway, that was a by the way. Now, less than, greater than, less or equal, greater than or equal to. But remember, in inequalities, we also have what we call inequations. Inequation. An equation having an inequality sign. Less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Now, we are going to learn more of what we call inequalities as we solve this number. Mr. Examiner, sir, let us go to the solution. In our solution, we are having a half x minus a third, greater than a third x plus a half. I remember when I was marking your work, there was a student who started by collecting them into like terms. That was okay. We can actually even move with yours. However, if you don't feel like first collecting into like terms, you go ahead to getting the LOCMs, you are still okay. There are so many ways of killing a rat. Someone will kill a rat by stepping it. Another one by boxing it. Another one by pointing at it. Another one by biting it. There are so many ways of killing a rat. Now, if we are to collect into like terms, Mr. Examiner, sir, what do we do? We shall have a half x. We get the positive a third x, we transfer it to the left hand side. It is a positive, but when it crosses, it becomes a what? A negative. Wonderful. So a negative a third x. Aha. Uh -huh. Which is greater than. Please maintain the inequality symbol. Some of you normally make a mistake and you change this inequality symbol into an equal sign. We are dealing with inequalities, not equations. We are dealing with inequations, not equations. Now, is greater than, remember on the right hand side, when we removed the third x, we remained with a positive a half. But remember we are collecting like terms. The negative third, which was on the left-hand side, is also crossing over to the right-hand side. When it crosses, it becomes a what? A positive. So we have a positive a third. Now, when we reach that stage, this is a fraction, that is a fraction, that is a fraction, that is also a fraction. We can go ahead and look for the LOCM. Remember, we now know how to look for the LOCM. But remember, the LOCM of 2 and 3 is... Not a two. Come on. Not a three. It is a six. Wonderful. It is a six. Now, we are going to have a six there. Six divided by two, we have a three. Three times one x, we have a three x. Minus mm -hmm. six divided by three, we have a two. Two times one x, that is our two x. Which is greater than Mm -hmm. We need also the LCM of 2 and 3, which is still a what? A 6. Uh -huh. Mr. Examiner, sir, the LCM is a 6. 6 divided by 2, a 3. 3 times 1, we have a 3. Plus, mm -hmm. 6 divided by 3, a 2. 2 times 1, a 2. Uh -huh. Keep your work neat. Now, collecting like terms here, a 3x. Minus a 2x, you remain with a 1x. So we have a 1x out of a 6, which is greater than 3 plus 2. What do you get? We get a 5. Which 5 is out of a 6? Wonderful. What do we do now here? Someone, when I was marking your work, someone decided to multiply this side by 6, multiply that side by 6. That was okay. Another person decided to cross multiply. That was still okay. Now, if we are to cross multiply, then we are going to have a 6 times a 1x to give us a 6x, which is greater than a 6 times a 5, which gives us a 30. Those who have just joined us, this is Obonyo Kenneth, e-learning project on Google the TV. We are here struggling with the number. You are coming late for the lesson. 
Next time, don't come late. Come early. We are trying to solve the inequality and to show our answer on a number line. Now, what do we have? We are going to divide the left-hand side by a 6. We divide the right-hand side by also a 6. The 6 and the 6 will cancel out. 30 divided by 6, what do we have? Uh -huh. By 6 ones, by 6 we have a 5. Implying that we are going to have x is greater than a 5. Some people normally forget when they reach the final answer, instead of uh, maintaining the inequality symbol, they forget and write an equal sign. Please don't write an equal sign. And again, before I forget, in inequalities, should you reach somewhere and you divide or multiply both sides by a negative number, the sign reverses. What do I mean by that? If you have a 4 is greater than a 2, and you decide to multiply by a negative 1 to the left, you multiply by a negative 1 to the right, you will have negative 4. And then on the right hand side you have a negative 2. You cannot maintain the symbol by saying is greater than. That would be wrong. Because much as 4 was greater than 2, negative 4 cannot be greater than negative 2. That's why I'm telling you that whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, in inequalities, the sign, the inequality sign is reversed. It changes direction. So instead of this one pointing to the right hand side, instead of it being greater than, it becomes less than. But we don't have that condition there. Our number still remains as x is greater than 5. Aha, uh -huh. Mr. Examiner, sir, this is our answer. But the examiner wants us to go ahead and show our answer on a number line. Remember, a number line is that line which consists of integers. What are integers? Remember, integers are either positive or negative whole numbers. Integers are either positive or negative whole numbers. They must be either negative or positive, and at the same time, they must be whole numbers, not fractions. Not fractions. Implying that a number line consists of only integers. Now we are going to represent that number 5 on a number line. We are going to have our number line here. That arrow pointing to the left. Implying that continuing up to negative infinity. And then that arrow pointing to the right. That is to positive infinity. But remember we need an origin where everything starts from. Aha, uh -huh. we are going to have, it is not necessary that you have to have it in the middle. Because now the number we are going to represent is a positive number. We don't necessarily need the negative numbers. So even if I have my zero there, and then I can approximate my five to be there. So I want to represent x is greater than five. Mr. Examiner, sir, if you want answers of x, if you want values of x, choose any numbers as long as they are bigger than 5, as long as they are greater than 5, as long as they are larger than 5. But Mr. Examiner, sir, before we rush to representing, we need to know that when we are covering the topic of inequalities, there is what we call representing inequalities on a number line. Whenever you are representing the less than or the greater than signs, you have to represent them with what we call an open circle. An open circle. And whenever you are representing less or equal to, greater than or equal to, you represent them with a closed what? A closed circle. A closed dot. What does that mean? It means that wherever that dot will be standing, it will be part of the answer or it will be one of the answers. But when you have an open circle, it means that where it is standing, it is not one of the answers. It is any other answer apart from where it is standing. Now, what are we going to represent? It is greater than. Do we use an open circle or a closed circle? Viewers tell me, we want to represent greater than 5. Are we going to use an open circle or a closed circle? Yeah, huh? 
Uh, yes, someone is selling me a closed circle. Not a closed circle. I have told you, you can only use a closed circle when you have one of these two symbols. But do we have them there? Of course not. We are having less than or greater than. In specific, we have greater than sign, which means we are going to use an open circle. Now, we are going to go where the number line is, where number five is, and we draw there an open circle like that. Then we ask ourselves, Mr. Examiner, sir, numbers which are greater than five, numbers which are bigger than five, numbers which are larger than five, are they to the right hand side of five or to the left hand side of five? I know some people are confused now. Some are saying to the left hand side of five. Some are saying to the left hand side of five. Some people are not sure I can see what you're doing. That is a criminal. I want you to either decide whether it is right hand side or left hand side. Let me repeat. Numbers which are bigger than five. Numbers which are greater than five. Numbers which are larger than five. Are they to the right hand side of five or to the left hand side of five? I can still see some fact confused. Some are pretending to be on calculators. A calculator is not going to help you there. You tell us, is it the other side or this side? I know some are saying, hey, the other side. Ah, uh, no, it cannot be like, it cannot be like that. Some are, are now saying, teacher, this side. Which side? Very good. Someone has given us the right answer. Someone, I think, from Kumi district. Yes, someone is telling us numbers which are bigger than five, they are to the right hand side. So, Mr. Examiner, sir, should you be looking for numbers which are bigger than five? Should you be looking for numbers which are larger than five? Should you be looking for numbers which are greater than five? Move in that direction. We draw an arrow like that. And we say, if you want values of X, they are there. X, the answers are that side. We have represented the answer on what we call a number line. That is what I wanted from you. That is what the examiner wanted from us. But remember, someone might ask, but teacher, you talked about a solution set. Okay, we can go ahead. For purposes of understanding, let us also give a solution set. Solution set, Mr. Examiner, sir. How do we write the solution set? A solution set is having so many answers it is having a group of answers are we together so that means a solution set we are going to have it in brackets we are going to say x is such that x is equal to but here they are telling us where the open circle is it is not one of the answers which means you have to move in that direction now after five what is the next answer someone is telling us 5.1 not 5.1 i told you on a number line we only represent integers and i gave you the definition of integers these are either positive or negative whole numbers they must be whole numbers not decimal numbers not fractions which means the next number would be a six so we shall say six, seven, eight. You cannot finish all of them. And then you can say dash, 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 dash up to positive infinity. And that brings us to the end of number two. After the short break, I'm going to give you some simple homework which will forward to our usual lines. In the case of any questions, you can always call me. Greetings to Mr. Kanyike Francis, who will be taking us in A-level mathematics. Greetings to Mr. Zimonia, Mr. Kasuja, Mr. Wodidi, Mr. Nsubuga. I, I cannot mention everyone's name. I know some are now scratching and saying he has not even mentioned my name. That guy, I followed him with my battery. I cannot finish all of you. But thank you so much for the support. Thank you for watching Google the TV. Always tune in daily. We shall be here with our chalk to ensure that the nation understands what education is. Let's return from the short break. Hello viewers, welcome from that short break. And uh, this is still Obonyo Kenneth. Some people have a problem pronouncing that name. It is Obonyo, O-B-O-N-Y-O. Obonyo Kenneth. I've been taking you in all level mathematics. Now, some simple homework for you. Some of you don't want to do homework. 
But the day I will come to your homes checking house by house. Do this homework, please. And forward the answers so that I can mark them. Number one says, Mary is three years older than her brother. In two years' time, the product of their ages will be 238. The examiner wants us to find the girl's present age. Which girl is that? Not Obonya again. The girl is Mary. Number two says, solve using elimination method. We are having a half X plus a third Y minus four equaling to zero. And a quarter Y minus a third X equaling to a sixth or one out of six. And then number three lastly says solve for M in, uh -huh, in what? 4 to the power 2m minus 1, equaling to 5 over 160, or oh, 5 out of 160. Now, elearningproject44 at gmail.com. That is the email address you can use to forward your answers. In case you're not interested in the email address, please, the 0791 351-845 is the WhatsApp number. Send the answers to this number. This is the WhatsApp number. Not the first one. The first one you can only call to make inquiries. So, that is the work that we are having for you tonight. Otherwise, always tune into our programs on a daily basis. I know some people are fidgeting to copy. The work is there. It is very clear. I don't want you to say that there is any error. Do the work. Don't copy from your neighbor. Keep in your house. Let us try to kick coronavirus out of Uganda. Keep in your house. Always sanitize your hands. Do that work peacefully. And then take photos of your solutions. And then forward them to the other last number. The WhatsApp number. I will mark and send you back the solutions. Obonyo Kenneth, sponsored by the e-learning project, Trinity SS Navuero, and on Google the TV. Please keep watching other programs. Thank you so much. May God bless you all.